Uh, clear. So I'm delighted to follow David Melding. I apologise to him for my inability to engage in the debate over the uh, hyperstatic, I think, union of the medieval church. Perhaps we can discuss off, 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 offline. Can I say, I, I hope that the process of the two-year withdrawal will help bring people to, to, together within our United Kingdom and within the Assembly. I, I believe that the Article 50 letter, as delivered by the uh, Prime Minister was uh, a masterpiece of diplomatic language. I don't know whether the First Minister has been convinced that it's uh, better than a, a straight uh, we hereby uh, withdraw the United Kingdom under Article 50 of the Treaty of European Union, but as a diplomatic piece of setting the basis for our discussions and our desire for a wide-ranging trade and security and beyond relationship, I felt it read in a very compelling way. I, I think there was May I just carry on for a little while? Um, I think there was probably much to and fro between the UK government and the European Council in terms of seeing each other's drafts and, and, and commenting and already a degree, if not of uh, negotiation, of least mutual feedback. That doesn't appear to have happened with the devolved administrations. And I say, share some of the First Minister's regrets about that. But he, he must understand that there is no government in Northern Ireland and that the Scottish government is an SNP government whose leader is committed to breaking up the United Kingdom. I urge him once more to protect the interest of Wales. Please seek substantive, wide-ranging bilateral discussions in private between the Welsh Government and the UK Government to try and push some of these issues in the interests of of Wales. I'd also encourage him to take up Julie Morgan's pleas, plea that not just UK ministers but key members of these uh, assemblies made commitments or at least uh, su suggested certain things would happen for the benefit of the Wales outside the European Union, particularly on the financial side. I would uh, urge him to work with those uh, people who campaign for leave, not just those who campaign for remain, including those who may have uh, influence with the UK negotiating partner. I'm encouraged by the draft negotiating mandate that came back from the European Council as well as by the Article 50 letter. Uh, it refers to negotiations under Article 50 will be conducted as a single package. It then says that the framework for the future relationship could be identified during a second phase of the negotiations under Article 50 as soon as sufficient progress has been made in the first phase. And yes, financial discussions are part of that, but there's a whole range of issues, including the rights of uh, EU nationals in this country, which we're very keen to, to settle and push forward and, and show, show, show good, good progress. So I think the link of those is encouraging. I also think in terms of the role of the ECJ, the relevant paragraph on that, paragraph 16, the withdrawal agreement should include appropriate dispute settlement mechanisms but the Council then refer to these bearing in mind the Union's interests and the ECJ, which I, I think is something we can, we, 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 we can work with in uh, discussing what would be an appropriate settlement uh, procedure. We then have the section on Gibraltar, which there's been a lot of coverage of. I actually think um, people, people may be mi missing quite a key implication of this paragraph 22 of the negotiating mandate. After the United Kingdom leaves the European Union, no agreement may apply to Gibraltar without the agreement of Spain. Now that phrase would be otios, unnecessary, unless it were considered that agreement would be a, by qualified majority at the European Union. If it is to be, as the First Minister is uh, afraid, a uh, mixed negotiation post-exit that would leave the unanimous agreement of member states and potentially of regional parliaments, then there would be no need to give that specific protection to Spain, who would already have a veto over such agreement. So I think it is encouraging that the European Union is looking at those uh, trade and related arrangements post-Brexit as potentially being negotiated by qualified majority. And I think the fact that these negotiations, at least after a bit, can proceed in parallel is good. Uh, to the extent, say, the Canada agreement was a mixed agreement, it had to go to the, the regional parliaments and be unanimity. But the mixed elements of any trade agreement we could potentially deal with with Article uh, 50. And the trade uh, one would be where the um, European Commission had exclusive competence. So again, that would be by QMV. And I think that does make uh, agreement potentially easier. I also think it's interesting that the EU is saying that it's the successor to all the agreements, even where we as 28 or 27 member states negotiate on behalf of the EU because it lacked legal personality. The EU says, well, that's its agreement and you know, doesn't bind, 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 bind us. So, for example, the WTO EU commitment in terms of the quota free of tariff for, Welsh, for, for, for New Zealand's lamb, 
they are implying, well, that's a matter for the EU, and they said, you know, they want us to take our share of international agreements, but that's for us to agree with them, and isn't something that they consider to be binding on us. So I think that's, that's promising. Finally, like the First Minister, I, I don't want to see, see, see tariffs, but I think on, on most standard economic analysis, it is just wrong to say that the whole of any tariff is borne by the consumer. You, you will have a demand and supply curve, and as the, as the price rises, consumers buy less. So that squeezes out marginal supply, with a remaining supply being at a, a lower price from the overseas supplier. Now, how much of that tariff is increased price to the consumer, and how much would be a reduced price from supplier to hold on to their share when there's actually less being supplied in the market will depend on the dynamics of the, of the, of the market. But I really am optimistic we will see a free trade deal that doesn't see tariffs. And I hope the First Minister will work with everyone in this Assembly as well as the UK uh, Government and uh, continue to look at this all in a, a, a positive way.